I'd like to give you an introduction to this module. So we're going to learn about basically Bootstrap 4 and just get a general introduction into how Bootstrap works through our Hello World program that we're going to create. So this module, what we're going to cover to start off with is what's new in Bootstrap 4. So there are a number of changes, they're pretty exciting changes that we're going to see. Some good changes with the grids, um, the fonts, and a lot of other things. So we're going to go into detail of what those are. We're going to look at the code editor that we're going to use. It's free, it's cross-platform as well. Um, also really popular and easy to use. Then we're going to get into initializing a new bootstrap for a project. Now different people have their own ways of doing it and basically this is the way it, it goes. Um, you can work with the CDNs, which means you're always going to be dependent on an internet connection, or you can bring it in locally. That's kind of the two main paths. We're going to bring it in locally. We'll look at how to do it with the CDNs, but we want to have it local as well so that we can have everything contained in our local environment and not have to depend on the internet because this allows you then to work without an internet connection, of course. So we'll see how to get that going. And then there's a specific way we're going to set it up just in the way of how folders are laid out inside of the project. And also we're going to use a tool to help us with our SAS pre-processing and the running of different tasks. So we're going to have a task runner and we're going to see how that's going to help us move files around and keep things organized as well. Then we're going to do a quick SAS introduction. So if you're not familiar with SAS, this is going to be a, a good time to see what it is, why we would want to use it, and it's not um, kind of a tour de force of everything about SAS. It's just enough to understand, okay, this is the, this component SAS and why we're wanting to use it inside of Bootstrap 4. In fact, Bootstrap has moved from less to SAS, so if you're familiar with less, that's kind of gone away. And we're going to see how our task runner is going to help us with pre-compilation of SAS as well. So speaking of task runners, we have Gulp. Gulp is going to do a few things for us. It's going to do the pre-compilation from SAS to CSS. So we're no longer writing in CSS files. We're just writing in SAS files. And even if you want to write just straight CSS, you could do it, but you need to do it in a SAS file because the CSS file will get overwritten when we run the Gulp task. So Gulp's going to do a few different things. It's going to move JavaScript files from the Bootstrap distribution folder into our project. It's going to move CSS files around. It's going to do the compilation for SAS. And it's also going to launch our web browser. So it's going to run all those tasks when we type in Gulp and then launch our web browser for us. So that's going to be part of our workflow and it's going to be fairly streamlined. So once we have all that going, we have our project layout done. We're going to then create a simple hello world, and we're going to see how that works with all of this now in place. So the project photo structures are laid out, the files are there, and we have Gulp fully integrated. We're going to see how everything works from that point on. Then that's going to be our template as we create and move into these different projects that we're going to be building. We're going to go over what's new in Bootstrap 4. And once we go through a listing of some of the new features, the more popular ones, I'm going to jump out. We'll go to the browser, go to the Bootstrap website, and take a look at some of the documentation there so you'll know where to find some of this as well and see a few examples. Now, as we go through the course, we're also going to see examples of Bootstrap 4 features in action as we build up our different projects. So one of the main things is that they've added Flexbox which is CSS3 flexible box, and it's used a lot with the grid. So what it does is allow you to accomplish more kind of popular layout and complex layout easily. So if you were trying to do the same thing in CSS, it would be a little more difficult and challenging, but we're going to see Flexbox really helps make your different kinds of layout that you want to achieve a lot easier to do. Also, they replaced less with SAS. So we see some examples of SAS and how to make use of it, how to compile it and get it into our CSS. Now some of the JavaScript has been rewritten in ES6 so that it has the latest standards and a lot of compatibility, um, good performance as well. 
And this relates to some of their plugins that they use that are, has JavaScript and then other different areas of JavaScript have also been updated. They've added cards and fun awesome. So we're gonna take a look at cards in a little bit and see how those are used. And then they had uh, the glyphs, um, some of the fonts that were being used. And those now are being replaced with font awesome. There's a new grid tier for smaller devices, so at 576 and below. So some of the grid um, uh, columns and different ways to access grid layout have changed. So when we go to the website, we're going to see some of the mentions of those changes. Also, Tether is a JavaScript utility that they're using for UI placement and tooltips. So we'll see how Tether integrates. It's actually a call. Um, at the bottom of your main page. So we saw in our index.html where we had the three references for JavaScript. So we had jQuery and Tether. Then below that, we had the Bootstrap JavaScript reference, which needs to go last because it does depend on the other two. Okay, what we're going to do now is go into the browser. We're going to take a look firsthand at some of these new features. So here I'm on the migrating to Bootstrap 4. Uh, documentation page so if you go to documentation you'll get several things over here in the left and then migration is right here so they're going to go through and talk a lot about the different changes so as we go through here you can also see the browser support that is going on now so they've dropped all the way up to ie9 and then there's mobile browser support in here as well so here's some of the big changes. Flexbox is enabled by default. So they're getting away from things like floats here. You can see they switch from less to SAS for CSS. And another thing here is they're favoring realms instead of PX. PX is still being used, but there's a lot more move towards realm. And the global font size has increased to 16 from 14. So that's kind of interesting. Probably has a lot to do with accessibility as you get more screens with retina and different things like that and you can see here also mentioning about the smaller devices for 576 there's been some renaming of those grid components so you'll see some of these like this that you can you can see here this is quite big so you can kind of change some of these together and let's see if we go down a little bit more of the grid system this gets involved this really um, we're going to see a lot of this in action, but these are the updates to the grid system. So use of Flexbox, the use of the new attribute naming that they've got going on inside of it as well. And if I scroll down, we can go to components here and you'll see they've dropped the glyphicons and here's font awesome. There's a few other things here that they've got octicons and we can see cards are here. So we're going to look at some of that. This is another look at flex, just flex in general. That's under Utilities Flex. If you want to look at this in more detail as to some of the examples that they have here, some of it is really nice with the complex layouts you can do. So you can see this kind of alignment that you can do. And scroll down a little bit more, not there, but there's some really complex. So this right here gets pretty involved. And as you shrink it, the browser, everything stays as it is. And there's a few others down here Let's see. So these kinds of layouts, you can see this one right here is horizontally, uh, basically floating. It's aligned horizontally. So a lot of interesting layouts now. And so let's look at cards. This again is, this is in components card. So we have, let's see, cards. And they give the introduction to what they are. So this is basically what they do. You can put a, an image up here at the top. Then you can introduce something down here, a button. And it makes this kind of layout really easy. And let's see if they have a few. So here's a few more examples with just the text. You can add links there. And no button on that one. List. So a lot of different things you can do. This is a big one with all the different components in it. So that's what cards are. And on some websites you may see where they have a hero image. And below it there's three different sections. A lot of the times they'll use a card that will look like this one here to introduce those three um, horizontally aligned boxes. Just gives it a really good layout. You can change, you can see they've got rounded. You can go a square if you want. So there's a lot of different things you can do there with customizations. Now we talked about Tether. And if I go, go out to the documentation route, go to the quick start actually right here. And let's see, I'm gonna go to the starter template. 
let's see this one here is different it's got some popper js we don't actually need to worry about that um oh and reboot before we move, move to look at tether um it's kind of like where we had normalized before so this is another different way to correct the inconsistencies across browsers um when you're starting a whole new section in your web page you used to have to do normalize or clears uh to have the CSS above you not affect what you're doing. So Reboot is kind of taking the place of that. All right, so let's look at Tether here. These are, this is the tool tips section, and that is, let's see, under components, you can see here. So that's where I'm at. And this is making use of Tether for it to function. So if I scroll down, you can see here third-party Tether, and that's Tether Men, and then they're going to show some examples. So here we are. You can see these, and you can see how you can just place them different areas and align them up however you want. Um, the default is on the top, like this one here. So if you are you have some text, a paragraph of text, you can just highlight a word in there, and the tooltip will appear above it. There's a lot of customizations as to how you want it to look. So that is where you get a lot of use out of Tether. So it's the tooltip. It's the way that it's laying out the tooltip, the positioning of that element. So that's what Tether is going to help with. So that is a look at a lot of the main features. Um, we're going to be going through pretty much all of those and more as we walk through our different projects.